Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, a bunch of psalms today. Uh, let's see, we've got 26, 40, 58, 61, 62, and 64. All right, um, all very similar in theme, kind of rescue me, deliver me, O Lord, um, be my refuge. A lot of themes of, of being my refuge, O Lord. And certainly we can um, see this uh, f- factoring into what we've just been reading. Um, certainly yesterday and um, the last couple of days that we've gone through uh, 2 Samuel. And that um, you can definitely, you know, as you're reading these Psalms, think back to what David's been going through. And you can totally feel what these Psalms are, are expressing and, and really where he's at with this stuff. And, and, you know, I think it's a, it's a good, you know, I think we have, um, I, this might, might just be, um, I don't know how prevalent this is, but I think there's two ways of viewing David. Um, and they're, they're kind of on, on two ends of the spectrum. First there's, there's, there's good David. There's David slaying Goliath, you know, and trusting in God. And well, Everybody else kind of backed off. He was like, no, the Lord is promised and therefore, all right, is the David who trusts in God, who goes to God first in all things and asks him what to do and how to proceed. Um, there's David who is a, a man after God's own heart. Okay, that's David. But there's also a David that is the sinner. You know, the David who lusts after Bathsheba. The David who um, lays with her and, and, and plots and has her husband killed. Uh, there's the David who uh, just stands by while his family is just disintegrating before him and doesn't do anything. Um, and we have that David. And so, you know, I, I think we have the, you know, in general, you know, if you think King David, you've got these two different polar opposites of, of who he is. And really you got to remember that it's like, well, there, there's more to it than that. He's, he's not both either one of these, he's both of these brought together. And that makes it a more complicated picture. But I mean, that's, that's what we are, right? We, we, we are saint and we are sinner brought together. We are a perfectly holy, righteous, delivered, redeemed person, you know, that, that Jesus Christ died for, that he has made acceptable to God. So perfect and holy in all ways. And yet we are also completely sinful and deserving of no grace or mercy whatsoever and just the, the, the worst. And so we have that together and we exist like that. And that makes us complicated. And so um, as you read these Psalms, and we're not really going to go through the details because, I mean, these Psalms are these are not difficult ones to understand. In fact, any one of these you could probably apply to either a situation in your life currently or in the past, and it probably fits quite well, you know, seeking refuge from God, seeking deliverance. But, you know, take what is said here and apply it to what we've been reading of David. And just, you know, a a guy who from, from a very young age was told that, you know, you are the, you are the anointed one, the one who will be king. God has chosen you. You have a, you know, you have a legacy that, that is going to be fulfilled and that, that God, uh, you know, what was going to raise you up and has been told all these things. And he is faithful and he trusts in God. And, and really while everybody else around him is, <laughs> is showing themselves to be just, um, very faithless, he remains faithful. And even the King Saul, who, who God has placed there, turns and, and, and has this fall and David remains faithful and he's merciful. And he, 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 he's like, yes, you know, you can see how he's, he is a man after God's own heart. And yet he is also a sinner and that he has failings. He has issues that he struggles with. And so, you know, you think of David, and this whole Absalom debacle. And, you know, think about those two sides coming together where he is, you know, he's faithful. He believes in God. He trusts in God. Absolutely. Still does. And then he's trying to reconcile what with what God has said of him, what God has promised him and, and grace and forgiveness and all this with, what have I done? 
you know, starting with Bathsheba. And, you know, David has it worse, honestly, I would say worse than, than a lot of us, we do. Um, because, you know, when, when bad things are happening to us, you know, we, we don't always know why, and we, we can point to various things, but we just say, you know what, this is what I'm dealing with. Okay. I mean, as, as all this stuff is happening with Absalom and, and his whole family and it's, everything's blowing up and, uh, you know, disgraced in front of all the people of Israel, everything that happens, Nathan, the prophet told David that this was going to happen because he sinned. Because of what he did with Bathsheba and um, uh, Uriah. Uriah? Yeah, I think that's her husband's name, Uriah. That sounds about right. <laughs> um, you know, Nathan says, because, you know, God has said, because of what you have done there, this is what's going to happen. This will be the, the evil to befall you. And so, you know, imagine when we're going through bad stuff, we don't always know why. You know, we can say, you know, well, is it God's will? Well, apparently. <laughs> but why? Don't know. You know, and so it just leaves us, you know what? I trust in God. I don't know why this is happening. I'm not sure, but I know, I, I firmly believe that God works all things for the good of those who believe in him. So this must have a purpose, even if I will never know it, um, even if it's, it, it is painful, even if it, it is just strikes me right to the core. You know what? I trust in God. David, as he's going through all this stuff, can look back and say, I am at fault here. All of this is happening. Because of what I did, I have the word of God that actually says it right here. Now, we could point to the word of God that says we are sinful, you know, that our sin is what brings, you know, calamity upon us, right? But it's in a very, it's a, in a more general sense. Nowhere in scripture does it say, you know, you, <laughs> in this moment, right this second, are experiencing this because you did X, Y, and Z specifically. We don't have that word of God, right? David had that. And so, you, as you read these Psalms today, you know, like uh, Psalm 40, um, there, there's hopefulness, you know, uh, verse uh, 11 and 12, as for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. You know, your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. Your mercy, your love will preserve me. Great, awesome stuff. But he says, for evils have encompassed me, surrounded me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me and I cannot see. He acknowledges my sin has blinded me because they've come up so far in me. Um, they are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. And then be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Um, you know, he, he's crying out for, for help and relief but because he knows exactly what he's done and exactly why this is happening. Um, and you can only imagine just how much that's got to weigh upon him. And yet for him to remain faithful, to, to say things like, your mercy, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. Um, I mean, thanks be to God for the, this gift of faith, because truly it is the only way we can get through stuff like this. Well, <laughs> God willing, you don't want to go through exactly what David's going through. But, you know, it is only through faith that David is able to, to be able to lift his head every day throughout that whole experience. Um, it is only through faith that he can have any sort of assurance that, you know what, I, I've done this. I've brought this all upon myself, and yet God will be merciful to me. And so the same thing with us. So as we read this, um, you know, think about how that worked in David's heart and, and, and imagine what he's going through and that faith and how crucial that faith is for him to preserve him through all of that. And to give him that that foundation and that 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 assurance that God has not left him, because I think if we went through a fraction of what he was going through, I mean we would probably seriously be questioning that. Like I'm pretty sure God left. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just has enough, has had enough with me. Um, so thanks be to God, he does not. He he is re remains steadfast and faithful towards towards us. Um, and certainly, you know, the, the faith that he has given you is, is a beautiful gift. And never forget that. Now, always cling to that. Is that is the thing that will get you through the tough times, that will get you through those times when you don't know what you've done or, or, or you know, what, what sin might, might have caused this, whatever it is. Um, but it doesn't matter, ultimately, because God is with you. God will preserve you. God will be your refuge. Um, and this is the, the hope that got David through. So, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good stuff in these Psalms today. So I uh, definitely encourage you to take some time, spend some time in these Psalms and, uh, and just kind of connect that with what David's 
been going through and certainly what you're going through. I think you'll be, you'll find some comfort there. So that's my prayer. Speaking of prayer, let us do that. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Tuesday. Hope your week is going well, and I hope you have a great day. So until tomorrow, peace be with you.